بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونصلي ونصلي على رسول الكريم Welcome inshallah to chapter uh, 15 Right, so this chapter is um, very much uh, it's a very much a hot topic and uh, people identify us as Sufia and they call us, you know, Brilvis etc from from this especially but when we hear the prophet's name sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know we kiss our thumbs like that and we rub over our eyes and i thought i'd include this as a chapter because it's a very common question that people ask um so what we find we don't we we as usually we don't find that it doesn't exist we find it exists okay the proof exists and one of the verses under which this exists is uh, in the Holy Quran 558 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the adhan وَإِذَا نَادَيْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَىٰ when, when uh, you call to the prayer so we're talking about the adhan and Allah Azza wa Jalla is saying some people take it as a uh, as an amusement they actually make fun of it as even now we find people make fun of the adhan and the reason Allah Azza wa Jal gives is because they don't understand they don't use their akal they don't use their reason they don't realize how powerful the adhan is in fact the prophet said sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you do adhan the devil doesn't like it actually runs so it's actually sunnah to do adhan or not just for prayer for other occasions it's actually sunnah to do adhan for example at the graveyard after you bury someone it's sunnah to do adhan on top of a mountain as well when you if it, i did i once we once were in, in switzerland with Hazrat and i climbed a i climbed a, i climbed a mountain with him it wasn't really a mountain let's call it a hill right, so we, we climbed a hill and the topic is why didn't you give adhan so he gave adhan top of the hill because it's sunnah you see so adhan is not just reserved for prayer it's, um, it's commonly understood and accepted that it's you know uh, it's identified with prayer but adhan is something which is uh, said on a number of occasions and what you find you find that for this verse certain mufassirun or mufassirin they have they have stated that the kissing of the thumbs of the, either the shahada finger or the thumbs is actually a sunnah and the hadith that they quote is not a fard it's not something you have to do but the 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 hadith that these mufassirun have actually given the ahadith that they've given show us why people do it okay we don't do it to identify ourselves as a particular sector group we do it because of, of our of our love for the prophet that's number one and number two we do it because there's something we need from him there are many things we need from him but this in particular if you know the reason why uh, the blessing of doing this then we'll probably you know, it'll encourage us to do it and you find this hadith under the uh, tafsir in, in Ruhul Bayan but it inclines people to good deeds so it's not a fard but it's something which is permissible so what is the hadith you find it recorded in these tafsir and also maqasid hasana and I put the reference, I put the Arabic there as well. That the, the Prophet said, وسلم, he saw Abu Bakr kiss his thumbs like this, or kiss his index finger like that. And the Prophet asked him, وسلم, why have you done this? And he says that I, I either saw your name or I saw your blessed image in my, in my nail. He wouldn't just kiss for no reason. He said, either I saw your name or I saw your image and I had to just kiss because it's the tashahud finger you don't just say shadu Allah ila illa ilaha illa shadu Allah ila illa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh right so you say that is part of your tashahud so he said I kissed my, my, my thumb like this and I loved it so much I then rubbed it over my eyes like that as to show an expression of love or like this it's the same so the Prophet sallallahu he he saw this and he heard this and he said Man fa'ala mithlu ma fa'ala khalili. whoever does as my friend has done it's not the particular hadith that's here but it's a similar one whoever does as my friend has done 
I will find them in the ranks on the Day of Judgment. In other words, I will intercede for them. There's, there's loads of people on the Day of Judgment. I will find these people because they've shown love for me. They've shown special love for me. They've shown love over and beyond. They haven't just said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as we say, routinely. And to be honest, how many of us mean it in our hearts? They've actually thought, you know what? I'm going to sh- express my love. I'm not going to do this, as Abu Bakr did. As the Prophet has explained, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever does, as my friend has done, my intercession, alayhi shafa'ati, becomes uh, necessary. So this is, uh, uh, this is the uh, explanation given by Rasul Wasallam directly. Now, you find uh, another uh, hadith, a little bit later on, on, the second hadith I've quoted. The Prophet said, Wasallam again, on the, day, on the Day of Judgment, I shall, I shall search for the person. He used to place his thumbs on his eyes when hearing my name during Adhan. All right? And not just that, I will lead him into Jannah. I will take him into Jannah. Such a small act. But for the Prophet, وسلم, it's an act showing so much love for him. He's saying, do you know what? It's so special for me. I'm going to lead them uh, into Jannah. Again, not, uh, not Farad, but uh, a, a, an optional act which has huge, huge rewards attached to it. And, and as I said, you will find the, uh, uh, the commentary in Tafsir Ruh al-Bayan, I've rep- reproduced it in Appendix 4, so you can, you, can, you can look at that as well. And you find in many books, many books about kissing uh, your hand or, or, um, with, or your thumb and rubbing it on your eyes, you'll find um, a, a lot of ahadith in, in all sorts of books. Don't forget, it's not just Sahih Sitta, there's so many books of Ahadith that aren't part of Sahih Sitta, which people still accept. And for example, um, the, the contents of this Hadith, whereby the, the ones who do this with their, with their thumbs and their eyes, the intercession will be close to him even though that person is, is a sinner. In fact, in fact, there is one... Uh, hadith whereby the people who have had issues with their eyes they've had illnesses and they've said when we've done this we find the illnesses get get cured why because with the prophet's name sallallahu alaihi wasallam there is shifa there is intercession there is healing so when people do this and rub the the tabi'in the tabi'in have said that indeed we find our eyes are becoming better are cured or we, we have prevention of, of illnesses. So you find all this in the, uh, in the collections of Ahadith. Again, at the top of page uh, 57, on the day of resurrection, I shall, I shall search for the person who used to place his thumbs on his eyes when hearing my name during the Adhan, and I will lead them into Jannah. It's recommended that when you hear the first Shahada in the Adhan, that you say, Sallallahu ala alayka ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And after the second one, you say, Kurrata aini bika ya Rasulullah. May, may my eyes rejoice with you, O Messenger of Allah. Qarrat uh, aini bika ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You see? So even the, there are du'as whereby you mention your eyes rejoicing for Rasulullah sallallahu so all these ahadith came together and you find this is not just a practice that people have invented it's it's rooted in in the sayings of the prophet peace and blessings be upon him and also in the practices of the companions including Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala remember we, we that, that was the first hadith we we narrated and again, a very famous uh, hadith book, Radul Mutha Muhtar. You find again, Qurrata Aini Bika Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We find that um, when you say, uh, uh, when you hear the Adhan and you hear the name of the Prophet mentioned Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is Mustahab. I recommend it to say Sallallahu Alaihi Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then Qurrata Aini Bika Ya Rasulullah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And then place the nails of your thumbs on your eyes and say, and say this dua, whereby, 
we are requesting the Holy Prophet وسلم, to lead us into to lead us into Jannah. Now this uh, this collection, Rad al Mutar, is by an Imam who was a Hanafi scholar in Syria, and we're talking about you know this collection being over two hundred years old. So this is not this is not a recent or an Asian thing. This is a, a, a Hanafi scholar who lives in who lived in Syria. This is not an unknown thing, and these ahadith are not made up. They're not fabricated. Okay, you might be able to say they're weak because of uh, maybe the the some of the weak the chains are weak, or some of the narrators are weak. Yes, you can argue that, but it doesn't mean they're made up. All that all that means is we can't take these and make it farad. That's all it means. We can't say it's absolutely compulsory. What we say is there are enough of these hadith out there, there are enough of the scholars out there who are accepting this, that it becomes accepted, it becomes allowed, it becomes mustahab, it becomes recommended, it becomes meritorious. So these weak hadith support each other. And these scholars aren't small scholars. These books aren't small collections. These are major collections in in hadith history. So to reject just by saying it's weak, that is actually ignorance. Because, just because uh, I think the issue is a person says, I don't like it therefore I will find a reason to uh, condemn it. Not, let me see if this, if this is acceptable. I don't like it. I can't imagine it's true. Therefore I will, I will reject it. And that's, a, that's not sincerity. Sincerity is this, you go with an innocent and blank heart and say, let me see if this is right. Let me see if I want to follow this. If you don't want to follow this, that's fine. But then you are denying yourself the opportunity or the chance. If this hadith is correct, and there are a number of them in a number of collections, if these hadith are correct, then why we are, are we denying ourselves the opportunity to be pulled out of the ranks on the Day of Judgment and to be led into Jannah by Rasulullah mm-hmm. And this is what it's all about. So we, we put our ignorance and we put our arrogance to one side and we look at these great scholars who are narrating these, uh, these ahadith. So it's not just an Asian thing, it's not just a recent thing. We, Abu Bakr did it عنه, you know, 1400 years ago and the Prophet وسلم, approved, then it's permissible. So to say it's wrong, that is wrong and that is also ignorant. And it goes against the philosophy of the hadith. Are you saying then these scholars are wrong? All of them. Is that what you're saying? That is, to be honest, the height of arrogance and ignorance. These, these people who claim they haven't even learnt a single hadith, they haven't even learnt a single uh, uh, um, of the chains, they haven't learnt a single of the narrators, the history of the narrators, and you can't with arrogance suddenly come along uh, you know, 1400 years later and claim you're a great muhaddith. No, you're not. Okay? So don't sit in your comfortable armchair rejecting this, rejecting that out of ignorance. Reject for a reason. I've got a verse of Quran from which there are the tafsir and there are ahadith which I quoted. And these collections aren't just small collections, they're big collections written by great scholars. End of the day, you ask that person who is ignorant, how many hadith books have you written? Let me give you a clue, the answer is zero. Okay. How many books on Islam have you written? Let me give you another clue, the answer is zero. Alright, so with, with that, with all those zeros, you have the audacity to, to take a hadith without even studying it and just say, oh, it's, it's daif, it's weak, and therefore I reject it. That, that is the height of arrogance. If the hadith is not fabricated, then we can accept it. And if there are a number of a hadith, even if they're weak, they support each other. That's the issue of a sulul hadith. That's an issue there. And if a verse supports it, Allah is himself is saying, don't take it as ridicule. And what do people, do people ridicule this? Allah is saying, don't, don't ridicule this. Adhan is not a small thing, Adhan is a great thing. We have to repeat, we should repeat what the Mu'addin says, but at the same time, what the Mufassirun are saying, 
look at this practice that what you should say and what you should do and what Abu Bakr did, uh, did also radiallahu ta'ala an. now I've also found a I haven't put it in here I've also found a saying whereby Hazrat Adam Islam also kissed his thumbs but I haven't been able to put it in here I believe that's also in Ruhul Bayan so this is not just a son of the companions uh, of the Prophet so it's actually son of Hazrat Adam Islam as well Yeah, you say la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim. Afaw hayya ala salah and hayya ala al-falah. You don't have to say it, but it's a sunnah to say it. Appendix 4, chapter 15, it's probably like 152 or something. It's 146 in the old books. Okay. Yeah, is there a hadith by Imam uh, Sakawi? Rahmatullah alayhi. Yeah. So again, Imam Daylami, rahmatullahi, he's narrated the hadith that when Abu Bakr Siddiq ta'ala, heard the Mu'addin saying, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, he repeated the same words and then kissed his index fingers or thumbs and wiped them over his eyes. All right? And the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi again, Man fa'ala mithlu. من فعل مثل ما فعل خليلي فقد حلت عليه شفاعتي. Whoever does this act of my friend, as my friend has done, my intercession for him becomes necessary. مقاتس الحسنة. And I've put the reference there as well. And uh, in addition, تفسيره البيان. I put the تفسير there. Kissing the nails of the thumbs. And the jihada finger when saying Muhammad Rasulullah has been classified as weak because it's not proven from a marfu hadith. However, muhaddithin have agreed that to act upon a weak hadith, to incline people towards good deeds, is permitted. So it's permissible. And muhaddithin are saying, muhaddithin are not ordinary bods, right? They, muhaddithin are people who have learned thousands of a hadith. All right? they, they didn't sit down looking at books, they just listened to the hadith and they learnt it. And not just the hadith, they learnt the whole isnad. Uh, this narrator said, this narrator said, this narrator and they and it came into their minds. They were so powerful in terms of their memory. And they, they were able to write, some hadithin overnight they wrote a book, <coughs> just from memory. It's, it's written in the, in, in, uh, in the hist- history books. There's some who had like Imam Bayhaqi, one night he just sat and just wrote an entire book overnight, just from memory. And they're ready for publication. And we've got the whole internet, we can't even, you know, write one paper easily. Right. So it's permissible. It's not made up. Alright. Quite an easy chapter, that one, quite a straightforward one. Okay.